Thanks for joining us on Life Songs Zoom. We've got Bart Miller of Mercy Me hanging out with us this morning. How you doing, Bart? Man, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm excited, but probably not nearly as excited as you are, because after a year of like radio silence, you've got a new album out. You've got all these things happening, a tour kicking off. Are you okay? <laughs> I, I am okay. I am. You know, the hardest thing I'm dealing with right now is where to look on a Zoom. The camera's way up there. I, keep I know. You, you know yeah, I keep looking at myself and I'm like, do I have anything in my teeth? <laughs> like if you were in person, just look at someone's forehead the whole time they're talking. It's like, what are you looking at? But no, I'm, we're excited. Yeah. Um, and um, just we are happy to finally have a new album. It's, you know, it's been four years since Lifer. And then this one took about two years to make. And part of that was intentional because, I mean, it's crazy. Our first single was Almost Home, which released a year and a half ago. And yeah. so a little long. And then uh, this was going to come out. Hope The plan was spring of 2020. The pandemic hit. And so just the idea of sitting on a finished record would for more than a year, uh, that would be hard as far as like songs feeling old before anyone ever got to hear them. So we kind of slowed the process down. And in, and during that time, basically rewrote a whole different record. And, um, you know, and so we, we wrote about 40 songs and the labels, like you're literally sitting on almost three albums here, like of songs that could <laughs> actually come out. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. I would love to finish it and drop it, you know, a few months after this one, but I, I'm not Beyonce. So I doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know, man. You could probably get a Disney plus show like that, or at least on discovery plus for sure. Shoot, um, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so right at the opening of the new album, inhale, exhale, which congratulations on, even if you've been sitting on it forever, you say this line and it's stuck with me for like days now, hold on to Jesus and breathe. Yeah. It's uh, if Proverbs was written today in 2021, that would be in the book of Proverbs. Where did it come from? Is this like what you're holding on to? Yeah. I mean, it's the, man, the album, when we did Almost Home and released it, the album was actually going to be called Spaceman. And it was, that's why there was an astronaut in that music video. And, and it was just the idea of, you know, we're just passing through concept. And then when the pandemic hit, <clears throat> it just, it, you know, everything kept changing. And like I said, we literally, felt like we wrote a different record. And so we thought it, it needed a different name. And, and uh, the one thing we kept saying throughout the whole process during the pandemic was, man, I just want people to be able to take a deep breath, set aside everything. It's just weighing them down and just remember what matters. And, um, and man, there's something to like uh, the simplicity yet the, the weight of just, you know, it was like, we wanted an opener for the, the album and we loved this kind of short cinematic thing. And it was like, man, what do you say to sum up this? It was kind of stressful. And, and I kept going back to, man, you know, the answer that, that always applies is to literally just cling to Jesus. And, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's the thing that I've done whenever the bottom falls out throughout my whole life is like, you know, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. So I'm just going to cling to the truth and what I know. And, and so, yeah, I just thought, man, is it that simple? And it does kind of wrap up the whole, the theme of the whole record is hold on to Jesus and breathe. It's, it's kind of a keep calm, carry on kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> you have your own recording studio at a cabin in the woods now. We do. One, I am super jealous. Like who wouldn't <laughs> want that? Two, what did you have to buy your wives in order for you to go away during a global pandemic and hang out in your own cabin? We didn't have to buy much because, I mean, one, the cabin is literally 10 minutes from my house, which is awesome. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's like we jokingly say like, you know, this this cabin, we bought it two, a little over two years ago and uh, just got it to where we could start tracking uh, about, man, probably around the fall right of 19. And um, and yeah, we say it saved our lives and maybe saved our marriage. Like, uh, cause it was like, we need, uh, like for the benefit of everyone involved, we just needed a sense of normalcy, something to go to work to do. And even in the first couple of months or whatever, when everything was locked down, man, I had a makeshift vocal booth in my walk-in closet and, um, just trying to get stuff done. And, and that's, there's a lot of problems with that one is, my wife can hear me singing all the time and, and she may like it for a little while, but it got a little annoying. And two, I'm having to be my own engineer, which is awful. I'm terrible at that. And so, but we tried to make it work. And the second we could get back up here, then we started like rotating one at a time, like let's, you know, uh, 
lice all the place and switch it when we didn't know. And then we finally eventually got back in and, and yeah, man, it's been a lifesaver. We love it up here. And, and um, yeah, and it's been, it's kind of been great. Like when we're not working, it'll just like, I'll just bring my family up here. It's in, it's on 35 acres. It feels like it's the middle of nowhere, but there's a Chick-fil-A a half mile away. So oh. it's, a, it's the best of both worlds. It's heaven. You <laughs> it found heaven. heaven after, after a career of writing songs about heaven, you built yes, it. It literally might be heaven. We're going to die and I'm going to be on 35 acres of Chick-fil-A. Going, Are you really? This was it? <laughs> Actually, that brings me to a question. Famously, a lot of your biggest hits deal with the concept of eternity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you started with I Can Only Imagine that blew you guys out of the water. And you've consistently written about looking forward to heaven and, and dealing with eternity, which I think is holy and a good thing to do. This album feels a little bit different, though. It feels more focused on the here and now mm -hmm. instead of the eternity to come. How did your heart get there? What's going on? Well, I mean, it's even with the one that's probably the closest to it would be like almost home. But even that is about the journey. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 the rally cry of don't give up now because we are almost home, you know, more. It's about that more than being home itself. And man, I just think um, uh, a lot of reasons. One, when the, the Imagine movie came out, there was so it like when Imagine blew up 2001, 2002. You know, it's, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was great. And that be kind of became our, who we, our identity was that song. And, and then going through actual tragedy over the years, I've written songs like Homesick and Finally Home and stuff like that. But this time around the movies, even though we've always played Imagine, the movie just brought new attention to the song, which we, we, we loved, but it was weird because it was like being pulled back into that. Hey, can you sing this over and over and over and over? And it was like, it was like, man, I'm grateful for it. But it was like, yeah, we um, up until the movie, everything else that was about heaven was something. It was me almost lamenting or something that pulled me into that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. This time as a result of a movie and it was fine. But when we started writing on the album, I was like, man, I just I just really want to I want to focus like we, we've got so many funeral songs. I want a song that's strictly about living. <laughs> and uh, and so, you know, we started with Say I Won't. And then it's and it's not just that it, whether it's the the subject matters about living, it's even just the music itself. Like when the spring, when the pandemic happened, we all of a sudden got hit with with every YouTube performance by the most amazing artists were the most gut wrenching, emotional, like trying to make me cry every time and usually working. And it's like watching the notebook like 11 times a day and and I was like, man, I just want to, I want I want someone to make me dance or laugh or something. And that's was when we, we begged the label to let us just drop, hurry up and wait out there and make, just so we could make this dumb music video where I'm in my pajamas in the cabin all day. Yeah. And it was fun to make. And I thought it was funny. And, and so our motto throughout this whole album was, man, if it doesn't rip your heart out, it should make him dance. And, uh, and so there are a couple emotional moments on the album, but most of it, it's all about the groove and just, you know, like I say it every time, you know, we want you to get caught at a red light dancing when nobody's looking. And, uh, and that's, that's a part of it being about living now as well. The music plays just as much a role. It's like, man, enjoy this, especially with what we've gone through, man, take advantage of every second and find the joy and the glass half full attitude through all that. Yeah. I was talking with our music director about the album just yesterday. And I said, there are at least, three songs including the disco song that you did with gloria Gaynor. yeah, yeah. I mean, come on <laughs> that are going to be like youth group like summer camp dance staples for the next yeah. 15 years so. We hope so it's 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 a lot of fun like we had when we wrote happy dance years ago we had so much fun and that song is kind of be called a, a cult favorite live and we close every show with it that we we're like man i enjoy being known for that and not whenever someone dies can i sing at your funeral <laughs> <laughs> oh God, one time, I swear, I was at a wedding and I heard the first few notes of I Can Only Imagine and I you looked at my wife and I'm like, do they know? Just ran did out of the know? back of the church. No! no. <laughs> Say I Won't is yeah. inspired by your friend Gary Miracle. What happened to Gary? Uh, what is his story? Well, Gary, uh, he was our first merch guy about 25 years ago and, you know, one of our roommates and one of our dearest friends, and he's a terrible merch guy. He may have been one of the first guys we fired too, but we still stayed best friends. But uh, Gary, um, uh, around Christmas of 19, got really sick, um, had a blood infection, uh, his, went sepsis, and, and, um, and they thought they were going to lose him, uh, start out as the flu and just 
it went it went bad quickly and they thought they were going to lose him and they had, they put him on life support and he was on it for so long and apparently what that does is it kind of pulls the blood from your extremities to keep your core alive and it gave his heart and lungs a break because they were struggling and it's like they finally realized they were going to save him but they knew they were probably going to take all of his limbs that was the that was the the trade-off and and so we had to watch from a distance because of the pandemic and his outlook and his attitude through the whole thing was like nothing I've ever seen. And, um, you know, he had his bad days, but for the most part, just his sense of humor never went away. Um, you know, he would even say that his, his, his trust in God probably got stronger, which I understand that. And, um, and, um, yeah, you talk about hold on to Jesus and breathe. That was a big part of it was just, that's all I kept seeing Gary doing was just, I don't know what's next, but I'm going to keep hanging on. And, and so it showed up in our music, you know, because I was watching it daily and it's, it, you know, it'll have an impact on you. And so in the, I wrote Say I Won't and it started out as talking about your identity in Christ. When you realize what you have in you, there's nothing you can't do. And by, by the end of it, it became this kind of rocky, you know, overcomer kind of moment, you know, where, you know, when it says, you know, I can do all things through Christ, give me strength, you know, keep saying I won't and I'll keep proving you wrong. And, and yeah, and so we just, we knew it was the first single, uh, didn't know how involved Gary would ever be at that point. And when we decided we're releasing the single, the label, we were like, we can't tour. We can't really be in front of people. So I just said, man, we need to come up with a really powerful video just to impact people somehow. And the labels showed me, um, they, they found a, this family, a story they found online about this family going through some difficult times and, it felt really kind of slimy because I felt like I was exploiting people I don't know to sell a song. And so we wouldn't do it. And I remember saying, man, I just, I don't feel like if that's it. Cause this song is basically about Gary anyway. I was like, Oh wait, what if we, what if we tell Gary's story? And so I called him and, and he had already talked about how he's like, man, I know there's purpose in this, but I don't know if emotionally or spiritually, if I'm prepared to be on stage anytime soon. And, um, and so I said, well, man, let us tell your story for you. We'll do the heavy lifting and we'll protect you in the meantime. And, and just tears in his eyes, him and his wife said, man, this is, we didn't know what we were praying for, but this is what we were praying for. And, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, so it's been a, it's, it's, it, man, it, it feels like it was years in the making as far as it being us that could walk this journey with Gary. And, and uh, it's been amazing. We've kind of created a monster. He's now he's like every day he's like, Hey, it's slowing down the charts. What's going on? Y'all doing I'm like easy there, pal. It will get there. You, you <laughs> calm down, Mr. Record exec. But, uh, but yeah, he's just a sweetheart of a man. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's the more people that hear his story, the better it's, you'll be different. You'll be better for it when you hear what he's going through and his, and his, his attitude about the whole thing. That's awesome. You can check out the story of Gary Miracle on YouTube, obviously, and we'll have the link on lifesongs.com and uh, check out the whole album, which is out now, by the way, Inhale, Exhale from our friends at Mercy Me. Bart, thank you for hanging out with us this morning. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, this is Bart Miller from Mercy Me, and thank you, thank you, thank you for your support of Life Songs. Uh, you have no idea the difference that you make. And re- always remember that God is good all the time.